Hi everyone, let's talk about why division with remainder works out the way we want it to. Generally, what we have is something like long division, where there's a number here and a number here. This one is the dividend, and this one here is the divisor. And what happens is that if we follow through with the process, down here we get a remainder and up here we get a quotient but the question is why why does the remainder exist why does the quotient exist and why are they unique so that's what we're gonna address today and we're not gonna look at it in terms of the long division algorithm because that's just a way of finding the quotient and the remainder what we're gonna do is look at it more abstractly like this. Suppose we have a divisor A and we have sorry that's the dividend A and we have a divisor D. Then we're gonna say that there exists a Q which is a quotient and a remainder R so given A and D where D, D is not zero because we can't divide by zero there exists Q and R and the most important part is the fact that R is greater than or equal to zero but less than D. That's a bound that's very very important because otherwise we won't get the uniqueness result. So not only do Q and R exist but they exist uniquely and we're gonna prove this now. But before we do that I just want to show you what this means geometrically in terms of the number line. So we have, let's say, 0 over here, and we have D over here, and we have, actually, we'll have absolute value of D since D might be negative. Then we have 2 absolute value of D here, and we have 3 absolute value of D here, and so on. We have negative absolute value of D, we have negative 2 absolute value of d and so on. The most important interval here is this one here in between 0 and absolute value of d because that's where the remainder is going to live. What I mean by that is that let's say a lives over here. So a lives in here. So what we're doing is that we're adding we're adding d or subtracting d repeatedly. So we we add d once here or absolute value of d and then we go again over here until we finally get to this interval where we have we're, we're definitely going to have some value that corresponds to the original value by a adding or subtracting multiples of absolute value of d. So we have r equals to a minus dq. So we had a over here, and then we had, then we went over here, and then we went over here, and then finally we went over here. And th this would work if a was over here as well, or any anywhere along the right side of the interval. We're just, we're essentially looking at the following set. We're looking at the set of a minus dq such that q is in the integers. And we're saying that this is going to have a unique value in this interval over here. So let's do that formally now. What we're going to say is that let s equal to the set a minus dq such that q is in the integers intersect with the non-negative integers and from the from the face of it it's not clear that this is not empty because we know that this set is not empty but we don't know that it necessarily has non-negative elements so first of all we're going to prove that it definitely does have a non-negative element so that this is not empty. And what the way we're going to do that is that if a is greater than or equal to 0, 
we can take d, sorry, uh, q equals to zero, so that a minus dq is equal to a, which is greater than or equal to zero, so we have a non-negative element. And if a is less than zero, take q equals to a d, so we get a minus dq is equal to a minus a d squared, which is equal to a one minus d squared, and a is going to be negative, and since d squared is greater than or equal to one, since d is not zero, this is also going to be negative. So what's going to happen is that this is going to be non-negative, and in fact, it's going to be positive. <clears throat> so this shows that no matter what a is there is a non-negative element of this set over here. So what that allows us to do is take S and apply the well ordering principle. What the well ordering principle says is that there's a minimal element because all the elements are non-negative. So they're bounded below by zero, so it should be fairly intuitive that uh, there is a minimal non-negative element. So we're gonna say uh, minimal element is equal to R. And what we want to show is that, is that R is less than, well, we know that R is greater than or equal to zero by definition. We wanna show that is less than the absolute value of d. So suppose, suppose, uh, well before that, uh, let's just note that a minus dq is equal to r, so a is equal to dq plus r, so it is in the form that we want it to be. So now suppose Suppose r is greater than or equal to absolute value of d, and we're going to derive a contradiction from this. We're going to get that 0 is less than or equal to r minus absolute value of d, and that's going to equal to a minus qd by definition. And uh, the absolute value of d, we can open it up into plus or minus d, and that's going to equal a minus d q plus or minus 1 and this is in the form a minus d q prime so it is in the form that we want and the issue is that this thing here r minus absolute value of d this is going to be less than r because absolute value of d is greater than 0 so what we found is that we have something like a minus dq, which is less than r. But that's impossible because by the well-ordering principle, r is the smallest such element. So that's a contradiction. So that shows that, in fact, r is less than absolute value of d. So that proves the existence of r. And it also proves the existence of q. Now we want the uniqueness compo component. The way we're going to do that is by utilizing uh, a sort of a, a phantom element. By phantom element, I mean we're going to assume there's two of them. So suppose a is equal to dq, dq plus r, such so that 0 is less than or equal to r is less than the absolute value of d and a is equal to d q prime plus r prime and 0 is less than or equal to r as r is less than r sorry there's a r there's r prime here so that's less than absolute value of d so what we're, first we're going to use these equations we're going to subtract them so what we get is that d q minus q prime is equal to r prime minus r so d divides r prime minus r. 
Now we're going to use these inequalities and what that tells us is that r prime minus r is less than absolute value of d but greater than negative absolute value of d. So d has to divide this value but this value is between negative absolute value of d and absolute value of d. The only multiple of d in that interval is r prime minus r equals to zero and that means r prime equals to r and then we can just put that into this equation to get d q minus q prime is equal to zero and so q equals to q prime as well and that proves uniqueness. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.